So, in this tutorial, we will learn about volumetric lighting in Blender, and we will see one application of this, to create a glow around an object, some special effect like this. And if we move the object in any direction, the glow also moves with it. It may seem quite obvious, but it's actually a little tricky. Let us start with a blank new file. We will add a volumetric lighting around this default cube. First, we need to add another cube or sphere, which will be much bigger than this, and which will act as the light volume. So let us add another cube object. This second cube is currently selected, and it must be quite bigger in size. So in the object properties, please change these scale factors to 10. Now, this bigger cube will work as the volume for our volumetric lighting. To avoid confusions, we can rename this to volume. Now, for this volume, go to the materials tab and create a new material. We have to modify these properties in a shader editor. So, split this screen into half. Then, open the shader editor in the left-hand side panel. By default, we have one principal BSDF node and a material output node. First, delete this principal BSDF. Then go to the Add menu and under Shaders, we have Volume Scatter. Or you can also use the principal Volume node, either of them will do. But the Volume Scatter node is little simple and little faster as well. Let us connect its Volume Output to the Volume Input of the Material Output node. And you can change this glow color to any color of your choice, let us take green. But the most important field is this density, we have to use a very low value here, like 0.001. We are done with this shader editor, so let us close this panel. Now, turn on the rendered view mode. You can see that our bigger cube, or the volume, is almost transparent, it's hardly noticeable, and that's what we need. Let us also go to the World tab, and change the background color, to a dark color, so that the visuals are more prominent. But for the actual glow effect to be visible, we need a bright light source within this volume object. So go to the Add menu, and from the Light group, add one, Point Light Source. By default it is added at the World Center. We need to first bring it out of the cube object, and place it in such a way, that it remains hidden, just behind the cube. It will generate light for the scene, but it itself won't be visible, when we look at it from this angle. Now, while this light source is selected, go to the light tab. We have to increase its power to a very high number, say 10,000. And a glow gets visible around the object. Let us hide the overlays for a better display on the viewport. You can also increase it further for a strong effect. Let us change this to 20,000. We get a nice glow around it, and it will look even better, if this object has the same or a similar color, to that of the glow around it. So, ensure that the cube is selected, and go to the Materials tab. Let us change its color, to some shade of green. And we can go for a dark green, with full saturation. So we have the same color for the object, and also the glow around it. It looks good, but I know what you are thinking. This is not really stable. It may be good for a still frame, but not suitable where the objects are moving. For example, if we move this cube to another location, the light does not move with it, and the entire thing becomes meaningless. Or, maybe the object itself does not move from its rest position, but we look at it from a different angle, the light still gets exposed, and the effect is killed. So we need some technique that will always hide the light source, behind the cube, wherever we move to. Only then the glow effect will look correct. We can't do that for all angles, but it will be enough if we can just hide it from the camera, because the camera view is all that matters in an output. So our task is now simple, we need to always keep the light in a straight line, with the camera, and this object, all three collinear. To understand this even better, let us hide this volume for the time being, and go to the solid view. So this light has to dynamically move, for any movement of the camera, or the cube, so that it remains always behind the cube. That basically means, its location values must change dynamically, we cannot use any static value here, like these. Instead, we need to use some mechanism, or some function that will calculate and update its location, based on the location of this cube, and the camera object. We can do that, using a technique called drivers. So while this light is selected, right-click on its X location value, and select, Add Driver. Now, we get to this driver panel. The driver type should be scripted expression. 
and we have a variable here, let us rename it to var1 and enter. You may get this security warning. You have to just allow the execution. To go back to the driver panel again, right click on this and click on edit driver. So we have our var1 variable. In the object field, select the cube. Then, this type field should be x location. Now click on this button to add another variable. Change this type to transform channel. Let us rename this new variable as var2, and in the object field, select the camera. The type should be x location. And in this expression field, we will type variable1 plus, then variable1 minus variable2. This will give us the difference of the x location values of the cube and the camera. We will take one fifth of this. Let us copy this formula, we will use it for y and z dimensions as well. So we are done with this driver. Now the x location of this light will be determined by the x locations of these two objects. And similarly, we will add another driver for the y location. But this time, instead of x, we have to select the y location in both the places. And we will use the same formula in this expression field. Finally, for the z location, add the same driver. And select the z location for these fields. The same formula goes here, like before. So these fields got drivers that determine the location of this light object. Now, if you move this cube to any other location, the light source will follow the cube. It will hide behind the cube, away from the camera. It won't be visible from the camera from any angle. And if we move the cube upward, or even downward, the light source will follow the cube in every position, always hiding itself from the camera. Let us move the cube back to the world origin. We will now verify this result through the camera view mode as well. So let us turn on the rendered view mode. We can now bring back our volume object. So the cube is visible in the camera with the glow effect as expected. Let us zoom out slightly and reposition the camera. We will look at it from a distance so that the volumetric effect is more visible. Okay, we are good. If you now move the cube to any other position, you can see that the light source is never visible. And the glow around it moves along with the cube, wherever the cube moves in this camera view. So, we covered some basics of volumetric lighting today, but there are more things that can be done with this. In our next tutorial, in the second part of this series, we will create a light cone like this using the same volumetric lighting, and I hope you will like this presentation. So please stay tuned. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel.